never believed the movies. John Gotti was not sent by Carlo Gambino to exact revenge for the kidnapping of his nephew. In fact, the man that was killed had absolutely nothing to do with it. Here's the real story. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots on the American Mafia and other organised crime. If this is the sort of content that you enjoy, please feel free to like the video and then hit the subscribe button for notifications on my future videos. Today we're going to be talking about the kidnapping and murder of Carlo Gambino's nephew. On May 22nd 1973, James McBratney was drinking in Snoop's Bar and Grill on Staten Island when he was approached by John Gotti, Angelo Ruggiero and Ralph Gaglione. Some accounts report they were posing as police officers looking to talk with McBratney. A struggle ensued and then Ralphie Wiggs pumped three shots into McBratney, killing him. Many books, documentaries and films, including the excellent 1996 HBO movie Gotti, starring Armand Asante, would have us believe that the killing was carried out on direct orders from boss of bosses, Carlo Gambino. This is the personal favour for Gambino that put John Gotti on the map and set him well on his way to becoming a made man. This is, however, inaccurate. Firstly, let's take a look at what really happened to Manny Gambino. In early 1972, Emmanuel Manny Gambino went missing. A short period of time later, his relatives received a ransom letter demanding $200,000. Some reports suggest it was two hundred and fifty. In a surprising moon, the Gambino family actually enlisted the help of the FBI. Although allegedly this was the mother asking an attorney to contact them on her behalf. In the end, a ransom was paid of between forty and fifty thousand dollars. However, Manny was never returned. So, what did happen to Carlo Gambino's nephew? Henry Sentner, often confused with the uncle of Gemini twin Anthony Centur, similar sounding, different spelling, no relation, was a low level criminal who owed Manny Gambino seventy six thousand dollars. Sentner allegedly lured Gambino to a deserted Navy base in Monmouth County, New Jersey, where after an argument where Manny Gambino said, hey, you don't come up with the money, your sister's baby is going to have problems. Sentner then pulled out a 22 and shot Manny in the head behind the left ear, killing him. So Sentner has now just killed the nephew of the most powerful mob boss in the country. But then he has a brainwave. He decides to enlist the help of some accomplices and concoct a fake kidnapping plan in order to extract some money from Manny's relatives. Eventually the authorities catch up with Henry Sentner and after a few interviews he confesses and reveals the location of Manny's body, which is discovered in a shallow grave on June 26, 1973. Sentner pleads guilty to manslaughter and receives 15 years. Interestingly, Sentner tried to convince the prosecutors on a slightly different story. He claimed that Manny was in financial difficulties. He said that despite being married, he was seeing showbiz blonde on the side and struggling to financially manage both relationships. Sentner tried to claim that Manny had concocted the whole hoax himself. Sentner claimed that him and his accomplices were getting nervous that Manny might spill the beans to his famous uncle. After an argument with Gambino, he then shot him in the head in his Cadillac. Either way, Manny Gambino was dead and Sentner was then locked up. So come on, tell us about Gotti. Okay. James McBratney was part of a kidnapping ring. However, they had nothing to do with Manny Gambino. A few years before, McBratney was in Greenhaven prison when he met Crazy Eddie Maloney. Maloney describes his friend in his book. He knew about guns and wanted to become a collector, but closest to his heart were his wife and two small children and his goal of saving enough to own a nightclub. Jimmy was very loyal to his wife and all that talk in the yard about broads upset him. In 1972, Maloney and McBratney were part of a kidnapping crew that was targeting wise guys. Allegedly, this kidnapping ring was the brainchild of Gambino mobsters Filippo and Ronnie Maiano. The Maianos only wanted 10% of any ransom. Their main motivation was getting revenge on other mobsters who'd screwed them out of business deals in the past. The Maianos supplied the kidnappers with the targets and the addresses. In addition to Maloney and McBratney, the rest of the crew consisted of Tommy Genovese, Warren Chief Sherman and Richard Chazon. 
Firstly, they kidnapped Lucchese family member Francesco Frankie the Wop Manzo and received a $150,000 ransom, paid by Lucchese boss Carmen Tremonti. After this, they carried out three more successful kidnappings of wise guys. However, the next kidnapping of a Gambino loan shark, known only as Junior, did not go as smoothly. Junior's eyes weren't blindfolded properly, the license plate on the rented abduction car was spotted, and one of Maloney's friends spilled his guts to the local wise guys. The mob now had the names of Maloney, McBratney and Sherman. Maloney warned McBratney to get out of town, but he wouldn't abandon his family. Maloney, on the other hand, was heading back to the relative safety of prison on a parole violation. History shows that McBratney wasn't so lucky. So, although it is true that Gotti had been sent to punish a kidnapping crew who had been causing problems across the five families, it had nothing to do with Carlo Gambino's nephew. So, what did become of Henry Sentner, the man who shot and killed Manny Gambino? In 1974, whilst in the old Federal Detention Centre on West Street, he survived a poisoning when his cocoa was laced with strychnine. He was rushed to hospital where he had his stomach pumped. Henry Sentner then bizarrely resurfaces in 2017. He's pulled over by the police and they find 16 kilograms of marijuana in the trunk of his car. At this time, Henry Sentner was 81 years of age. Quite a feat to live that long after killing the relative of Don Carlo Gambino. If you found any of that interesting then please feel free to like the video and hit the subscribe button to get notifications on my next episodes. Thanks for watching.